Chapter Eight of Bazaar by Lawton McCall. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Nick Bulka. Agriculture indoors. The usual package of seeds has not arrived. Is my representative in Congress neglecting me? The uncertainty appalls. Year after year this eminent legislator has favored me with floral tributes in kernel form, so that I have come to think of them as my inalienable right as a constituent. True, as is the case with the thousands of other voters in this urban district which he represents, I have no facilities for horticulture. Living in a New York apartment seven stories up, and unequipped with arable soil, the nondescript substance which deposits on my window sills from outshake and mops above would scarcely qualify as loom, I have been at a loss as to what disposition to make of said seeds. My dear friend, writes the benevolent legislator, I am enclosing a list issued by the Department of Agriculture showing bulletins available for free distribution which contained very valuable information for all classes of readers. And he invites me to choose any six, by number, that he may promptly send them to me. Only six. To select that limited allotment from so alluring a galaxy is difficult, not to say bewildering. Number 73 catches my eye. Fly traps and their operation. I simply must have that one. It seems to promise an insight into the mysteries of oratory. Perhaps it may enable me the better to appreciate my M.C. Nor can I hope to live a rounded life if I fail to assimilate number 940, common white grubs, and number 920, milk goats, and number 788, the windbreak as a farm asset. That makes four already, to which I must certainly add the kindly number 1105, care of mature fowls, and the arrestingly realistic number 1085, hog lice and hog mange. Thus, my six choices are used up and I am but at the threshold of this new world of knowledge that lies tantalizingly before me. What of number 685, celebrating that splendidly uncompromising American growth, the native persimmon, and the intriguingly cryptic numbers 515 and 1143, revealing the secrets of vetches and Lespedeza as a forage crop. Surely this coveted information should not be withheld from me. Why should I be deprived of the privilege of reading aloud to my family number 762, False Cinch Bug, Measures for Control, and number 1127, Peanut Growing for Profit, and number 948, the rag doll seed tester if such romances were available for everyone there would be less senseless gadding about on the part of our young folks let the flapper fill her mind not her flask with number seven sixty seven goose raising or number seven fifty seven commercial varieties of alfalfa and let her heed the warning against short skirts in number eleven thirty five the beef calf it has been said that there is in america insufficient appreciation of architecture ah true my friends let the multitude con number four thirty eight hog houses and as examples of chaste suppression of meaningless ornamentation numbers nine sixty six and six eighty two a simple hog breeding crate and simple trap nest for poultry included in this invaluable list are to be found not only the frankly practical 
but also the vividly dramatic, offsetting such everyday but insignificant matters as number 1189, the handling of spinach for shipment, number 1153, cow pea utilization, number 1161, dotter, and number 978, barnyard manure in eastern Pennsylvania. There are offered imagination-stirring themes like number 835, how to detect outbreaks of insects, number 874, swine management, and number 1003, one that should be especially prized by the impecunious, how to control billybugs. Until I read this list, I had no idea that spiritualism had entomological phases which Conan Doyle seems to have overlooked. Again and again there is mention of strange creatures and their psychic controls. Number 1074, The Bean Ladybird and Its Control. Number 1060, Harlequin Cabbage Bug and Its Control. Number 897, Fleas and Their Control. And number 975, presumably throwing light upon the immigration problem, the control of European fowl brood. More comprehensible to me are the following. Anent Home Life and Pets, number 1014. Wintering Bees in Cellars, number 1104. Book Lice, and number 846. Tobacco Beetle and How to Prevent Lost. Does one keep the beetle on a leash, I wonder? Bolshevism, number 1054, the loco wheat. Chambers of Commerce, get-together clubs, etc. Number 993, cooperative bull associations. Prohibitionists, number 1220, insect and fungus enemies of the grape. All in all, there are at least 30 bulletins which every citizen of this metropolis needs to make him an intelligent voter and my M.C. allows me but six? My allotment being limited, he explains. But why should his allotment be thus limited? Since he grants that the bulletins are indispensable to my enlightenment, it is not for him to apologize, but to see that I am fully supplied with them. To protest that the Department of Agriculture cramps his largesse is no excuse. For does not Almighty Congress rule the Department of Agriculture and run it in the interests of the people and not for the sake of a lot of rubes? No, let him spur the Department to greater efforts, press the presses to greater output. When my little son looks up into my eyes and asks, Daddy, tell me about the flat-headed apple tree borer. Am I to answer him? Sorry, my boy, but bulletin number 1065 was denied me by a niggardly government. My M.C. will not have done his complete duty till every home in this city boasts a five-foot shelf of bulletins and the head of every family can gather his dear ones about the radiator in the evening with a cheery, Ah, now we take up number 956 the spotted garden slug. Everyone who pays strict attention gets a hollyhock seed. Only then will the true function of government be realized. Meanwhile, the seeds have come. End of chapter 8